Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, brought to you by our great friends at Mercedes-Benz Vans, with your co-hosts, Robert Murphy and Marcus, the stallion Bontempelli. Marcus, what's happening? How are you, man? Mate, um, I'm going well. I'm going well. Good to be back, obviously, on the podcast again for another week, but... Um, obviously, the, the footy world is continuing to sort of, um, I guess, not rev their engines, but the wheels the wheels are turning as we get closer to, to games. And, and clearly, the, the fixture release, I think the fixture release just makes you understand that it's real in a way. Like, I think we've been waiting so long and like, there's been a lot of talk about um, games being played and getting back to training. And now you sort of feel like there's an, an assurity around, all right, well, we're, we're playing in a couple of weeks and you can start to see that the football try and get back on on track so really good feeling at the football club the boys are all pretty pretty pumped but um there's, there's only a small amount of time so you're just trying to get in as much work as you can what's the mood like in the locker room and the and the meeting room with the coaches and the players well to be honest with you that there, there, there is no locker room we're not actually allowed to all sort of um Oh. congregate in the one area together only outside on the Jeez. training field so I know, I know I know you're a big fan of the locker room that oh. was one of your, your favorite spots in the football club but for now wow. with social distancing and then obviously the group um, the group training we're only really allowed together outside all together so that's our close to, I guess outside's our locker room now the footy oval but um, you know the, the energy's up the banter's up um, it's just it's great to be back together so essentially we can have two what we call main sessions together a week where we can have the whole group together and all the coaches um, are part of the session so um, you obviously look forward to those those two sessions as being Monday and, and Friday so um, we've got another one tomorrow which I think we've got a bit of match play in there which, which all the boys always look forward to which means less sort of running drills and more just game stuff which is good did you get straight into the competitive training when they were when mm. they gave the tick of approval? Well, and what and what was that like? Because I mean, it's been a couple of months to mm. you know where you're used to getting you know bashed and hit and knocked over, and all mm. of a sudden you kind of you know detrain to a sense. How was it like getting back into it? Yeah, I mean, it was great. You, you, we flicked the, the switch pretty quickly because everyone knows that there's only you know a couple of weeks to go before we're back into game so you're trying to maximize every sort of minute that you can get out on the track so a lot of tackling um you know a fair bit of just body sort of on body contact just to get yourself used to um yeah the knocks and and um the, that likeness i think of the footy the, the the game so um it was sort of not sprinkled throughout which you normally do a little bit of it in every main session but there was a, a real big bulk of it it was a big part of the session on monday so you certainly notice it i think we were chatting before about how you go you know obviously you spend the whole season and whatnot training a particular way um and throughout the pre-season and then all of a sudden you're without it for a bit and you certainly notice the first time you smack back into it from a contact point of view yeah. so boys were a touch sore i think tuesday uh, we had a lighter session yesterday and build up to a big one tomorrow so um yeah it's, it's good to be back into that sort of stuff right at the moment if i had to ask you what's sort of taking up most of your thinking is it the is it that contact combat side of the game is it the lungs fitness aerobic stuff or is it the finesse mm. is it the touch the mm. goal kicking, the sharp hands, which which are you kind of finding yourself focusing on a yeah, bit more? Yeah, it's probably the the you know the touch and the um, execution side of things. I think when you're even in any off season, but particularly the period of of absence of just training in pairs, you can't hit the same level of um, you know intensity, but execution from a skill point of view. So that precision um, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And yeah, the other thing is you're only together for a short period of time as well as a whole group. So you're really trying to build chemistry um, on a pretty short runway. So that's what, you know, we're putting a fair bit of work in into now that we can train all together is trying to build our chemistry between the lines. So the mids forwards and the, and the backs again, so that, um, I guess once you come back together, you want to be the team that's able to best to w work the best together as well as from a fit. I think our fitness base seems pretty strong based on, you know, I guess the, the program that we've had to be put together and um, some of the sort of results and stuff we've had since we've, we've gotten back from a testing point of view. So that's good from a confidence point of view because then you can sort of go, well, you know, we're obviously been doing enough work. 
now you're just trying to put the other pieces of the puzzle together. So yeah, it's probably yeah. that one I reckon. Mm. How's the uh, how's the opposite foot kicking going? Because after last week's pod, I was sort of waiting for the call to come down and just give a bit of advice or run through a few drills, but no calls yet. Nah, yeah, I'm, I'm su- that's surprising to be honest. I thought after the last week's ep, you know, uh, were you a left footer or a right footer? Because obviously the left foot kick inside was nice, Honestly. but your last kick ever was on your right peg and. I choose, I, I choose not to answer this question. I just, I just let the, I just let the, uh, let that, let the gift do the, the talking. The, the tape do the talking. Appreciate yeah. it. Hey, uh, well, that, that was one I thing. Funny. You? Yeah, sorry, you go. You should mention that um, opposite foot kicking, I think, um, is always a bit of a personal preference. I think from a coaching point of view, but I think if you can remember, and this is going back to probably when Bevo first came to the football club, he was he was massive on it. I don't know what coaches were like um, before and in your time at the at the club, but was there as always a big emphasis put on opposite foot kicking yeah. as there was when Bevo took over? He seemed to really go, I don't care if you you're okay at it. Your garbage. Um, if you're good, that's great. But everyone needs to be able to use it. And we'd spend, oh, yeah. we'd spend big chunks of the session just working on on obviously both sides of the body. It was almost the opposite because when when mm. I was a, when I was a kid, I used to kick on my left foot almost as much as the right foot. Like I was yeah. just any chance I got to. And then I got when I got to the Bulldogs, it was almost coached yeah. out. It was like, no, yeah. you've got to try. The, the mood of the times was. Mm. always try and get on on your dominant so the, the, yeah. the opposite foot was a bit of a get out of trouble kind of um kick mm. and i used it more mm. than most but it was yeah bevo was yeah, sort of brought it back into vogue you know pretty mm. pretty heavily at, at the dogs hey can i can yeah. i ask you um so uh we're recording this on thursday yesterday uh buddy twinged his hamstring or tore it or mm. strained it we're not sort of sure the how the severity of that i've got a couple of questions about that For the first one mm. um are you you know does that does that sort of register with you, you know one of the best players if not the best players in the game you know one of the players of his generation and you're one of his um contemporaries um but the other thing is how acutely aware are players and, and your fitness staff at the moment of injury prevention? Because it, it already, it seems like, you know, we've seen Ben Reid, seen Trelaw, seen Buddy. There's been a few others as well um, mm. who've, who've had strains because, you know, because of the, I, I assume, because of this, you know, big layoff and now the intensity of training goes up. Mm. Um, is, there, is there some different methods to prevent those kind of things? Yeah, and I think, the, I mean, my take on that's probably those couple of players that you mentioned have got history. I think, like, Buddy's obviously missed a fair bit of footy, which is such a yeah. shame because he's such a superstar. Like, I sort of consider him, when I think about my career and I think about all the players that I've played sort of, you know, with yourself, you're obviously up there, mate, but but especially against, I sometimes go, I can't believe I've played in the era of, of Buddy sort of Franklin. And, he's good too. Um, yeah, he's good too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm telling the story, yeah. champ. And so <laughs> he um, he was, yeah. So I, I, I always look forward to sort of playing against him because you can just, you know, obviously marvel at the the athleticism and the um, talk about execution. He's one of the best sort of field kicks, let alone sort of goal kicks in in the game. And is he is he the, the player? Who, out, is he the is he the player who's had the biggest aura? Do you reckon opposition player? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, who else I mean, do you think from of? A, from a player's perspective, um, who else do I think of? Oh, I mean, at the minute, Brody Grundy's got a bit of an aura because he's just he's so influential and he can do so much. Yeah, particularly against the the dogs, he's had a couple of um, he's had a game or two against us. Um, I mean, uh, Fifey's always been a bit like that because he's just you know around the ball. Cripper's a bit like that too because. Um, he's just so dominant as a as an inside yeah. mid and starting to open up the outside parts of his game too. So um, they're the ones that just carry so much influence. But Buddy, to me, sort of Buddy stands a little bit above sort of the rest yeah. in terms of just his presence. Um, and I remember, I always remember actually, it's, the, it's just come to me now, um, back when probably first or second year, I reckon at times, because I was a taller mid, um, I would go and play as a... 
um, as a spare sort of loose defender, just as a, what we'd call a seventh to help basically not ice the game, but, but put an extra number late in games to sort of kill the momentum of the game and just sort of get through mm. to the break. And we were playing Sydney, I think, at Marvel one game. Um, it, might, it was my first and second year, so I was young. Um, and I was basically directed to just go and stand basically 10 or 15 in front of Buddy. <laughs> And Buddy being the size that he is, but also, like we've spoken about, the presence and the speed, I sort of, you know, we're going to go, all right, yep, there he is. But then in the end, I didn't have to look because he'd just tell me basically where he was so he could let me know when he was going to come and basically run through me. Um, so I always remember that because I was sort of only young at the time, but um, he was sort of taunting me saying, yep, right there, mate, right there, that's perfect. That's where I'm going to, you know, that's where I'm going to sit on your head, basically. <laughs> He's pretty like he talked a lot out on the field for a bloke who was very shy off it, wasn't he? It's he always did. kind of like there's yeah. there's Lance, there's that you know that yeah. classic thing. There's Lance Franklin off yeah. the field, yeah. and his buddy, bit mysterious, buddy on bit it. mysterious. Yeah. yeah, like in terms mm. of on field, the he had a personality, and then off field, clearly a little bit different. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean it's a shame. Back to your question, I think with regard to you know physical the physical side of things. Um, it's going to be a challenge. I think we're going to sort of have to work through each situation as we go, but there's definitely a, um, a hyper awareness to your body being able to cope and get through off such a short run in to, to games. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's a fair, I mean, we've done a mountain of work in the, in the lead up to coming back to training, but um, even now when we get back to full training, there's a pretty important emphasis on how you're obviously feeling to get through Um and obviously getting into to the, f- the first game is going to be super important. So, um, yeah, like I said, injury prevention and, and strength is, is huge, but we're just going to have to face each sort of challenge as we, as we get to it. Yeah. You're sporting quite a uh, long set of locks there under that, under that mm. beanie, Marcus. But um, I was wondering, uh, you're a young captain, so is Max Gorn, young captain in the game. And he found mm. himself sort of being questioned a little bit for his... For his blonde mohawk during the week, there were some some mm. um, voices in the media who were sort of questioning whether that was an appropriate kind of move for a, for a captain of a footy club. Do you have a kind of opinion on that? Oh, I don't mind it, to be honest. I think, um, you know, there's a, you know, potentially he's not, you know, um, doing it for himself. He's doing it just from a, a perspective of trying to get the boys up and about, a little bit of sort of difference, some interest, um, and just to... Um, you know, create a bit of energy at the, the football club because um, he's never sort of, to me, um, stood out as a player who, you know, seeks attention or, or anything like that. He's a pretty good larrikin. So if anything, he's just putting on a bit of a show for the rest of the group to um, get him up and going. And I mean, ultimately, if the the footy stuff's there and that's that's the ultimate thing, if he's still doing what he can inside the football club, and I don't think there's any issues. I don't mind the individualities in our in our game in terms of haircuts and, and even how blokes sort of dress and whatnot. So at the end of the day, everyone's going to have their own opinion. But from my perspective, I'm not too bad. You're a bit more classical, mate. So how, how, where did you sit? Oh, well, I mean, you are nah, you're a bit contemporary. Nah. Where did you sit with it? Nah, didn't mind? No, nah, I, nah, I love it. I loved it. Yeah, you keep, good. I mean, the actual the actual haircut is, I don't, you know, mm. The the haircut is arbitrary, but to, yeah. to sort of kind of call him into to question for it. So, no, no, mm. no, no, no. He yeah, he's a hard trainer. He performs, and he exactly. and one of his great traits as a leader, um, yeah, which you have as well, is that self belief mm. and ex- ability to express himself. And if that if he mm. feels like he can do that with a with a mohawk hairdo, then more power to him. And it probably mm. gives his teammates more confidence. When they yeah. are low, you know, they're, but, they're, yeah. they're, they've been down the bottom of the ladder for a while and he's their leader, you know, he's got that sort of bravado and front and mm. courage to sort of put himself out there and still do it. So I, I kind of think it's a yeah. kind of thing. It's a good thing. Because you never liked think, my hair long, though. That's why, that's why I well, always... The top, I mean, you, the top you, you were is, always like, mate, cut it. <laughs> the, 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 I mean, the top knot sort of did sort of... No. Wasn't a top knot. But, it wasn't a top knot. It was it was ninety degrees. It was perpendicular. <laughs> mm, it was getting pretty high there Still at one point. Looks. <laughs> well, nice segue anyway, talking about hair because uh, we're going to take a little break, and af- yes. after that break, we're going to welcome in Young Gun and Mullet Man himself, yes. Bailey Smith. Yes. 
Welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, episode 10, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. And it's our great pleasure, Marcus, to welcome in to the Barclay Street pod, the young gun, the man with the hairstyle that is the envy of most Australians and a lot of our international mm. brothers and sisters, Bailey Smith. Bales, welcome to Barclay Street, man. Thanks for having me, boys. I appreciate it. How are things? How are you holding up? Nice, uh, nice to be back at training, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm not too bad. Um, holding up pretty well. Um, good to be back at the club with the boys and a um, bit of full training together. A um, bit of contact this week as well, which is great. So, yeah, enjoying it. You're more of a sort of outside um, uh, sort of runner. Don't like to get your hands dirty. How's it been? Oh, How's the contact? <laughs> um... <laughs> Don't give me that. No, it's been, it's been really good. You'll get used to this, Bailey. This is how he normally <laughs> likes to roll. Early, he likes to stamp his authority. And you two don't know each other probably well enough yet. But a lot of this will, conversation will revolve around Bob. And he will just go, oh, I used to do this back in my day, black and white days. So if, I don't know if you've seen any footage. I don't know if you caught any of the footage from last week's podcast. But pretty Bob, good, unbelievably... Bales. Yeah, he kicked one. Yeah, he kicked one nice one across the body into Woody. He was running, lace out. It was unbelievable. I'll send you a. I'll send you a cassette of it, Bale, so you can uh, fully appreciate. I'll study it. up. I'll study up for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but seriously, how how has it been? Is the body holding up all right? Because there's there's players dropping left, right, and centre around the league at the moment. Getting back into the swing. Yeah, no, it's holding up. Yeah, not too bad. Um, as well as it can. Um, but yeah, just sort of just trying to recover and get through each session. Um, and yeah, as long as we can do that, I suppose we'll be right for round two. Um, but yeah, sort of get smashed a little bit, but um, you expect that, I suppose, coming back, getting ready for the games. Can I ask you two a question? Are you both the sort of players when when you get the fixture? So this, you know, it's an unusual season. We know that. So you, you know, we only get the next four games. Are you two the type of blokes who will sort of study the four or look for? Um, one of those four, just to kind of have an eye, or you just so like, oh, I'll just play the next one as it comes. <laughs> you go, Bob. Yeah, seems like this is a um, loaded question a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think oh, always. Cool. I think you always. Um, always. I mean, obviously, what? it's. I think now it's particular because we've only got four weeks to assess. So you've definitely got we know who you're playing in the next month. Um, and clearly there's a number of challenges on the schedule, but obviously we look forward to the, the rivalry games at times and opportunities to, to get one back. So the Giants is the, the second game we play in the two, uh, which would be nice, a, a Friday night clash. And obviously um, I think, you know, we'll be looking forward to playing in that one. But St Kilda to the start will be, will be good. But that's my personal opinion. Baz? Yeah, yeah that, I'm, I'm, sort of the, I'm sort of the same. Um, you look forward to those rivalry ones, but you don't let, you know, Saints slip and um, the other um, games that mightn't feel like that are as important. But, um, you know, like you yeah, love to play against Getty on Friday night, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. What about the, um, you've had one crack at it with, with no crowd noise, but is it something that sort of um, plays on your mind? Because in my world in sports media, there's there's a whole heap of conversations and, and the different opinions on, you know, what it'll be like without, without a, you know, a crowd there and the effect that that has on the atmosphere and all of those sort of things. Is it, do, you think, do you think players will be affected by it a great deal or do you think it, it just won't be much of a factor that you guys can create your own sort of atmosphere and energy out on the field? Well, in round one, like, I sort of um, was trying to stay as locked in and focused as I could, but, like, coming to centre bounces and stuff and it's just dead silent, and everyone's gassed. Um, and it's sort of just quite a little bit awkward. Um, I couldn't help but think it was a little bit awkward. Um, I don't think it'll, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it'll affect too much. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of just weird. It's just, yeah, different. But if you come to play, I suppose you'll play as um, yeah. hard as you can, as you should. Yeah, I agree. Well, it will and it won't. Some players will probably cope better with it when they won't need um, as much, you know, crowd sort of, probably the players that don't rely on, you know, the crowd incentive as much, but there's certainly 
at times you do feed off it and you know just as well, Bob, if you're down and you kick a couple, the crowd definitely can can help sort of spur you on and keep that momentum going. So yeah. that's the challenging thing for young teams to feed off energy and momentum of sometimes outside sources, particularly people and the, the energy that comes with crowd, you know, football. Um, yeah, it's going to be an adjustment, but it's the the new way of playing football at the minute. So it might make, it might be a beneficial thing in the long run for players to become potentially more resilient and more locked into the game and feed off their own energy and each other's a bit more. Do you think it'll play on your mind and the, and the, the minds of the leaders a bit more bond of, you know, of, you know, checking in with, you know, young guys like Bailey and, and, and so on and so forth. Well, the thing we probably thought going to round one, that it actually makes communicating a fair bit easier. So you're able to actually yell to someone who's 20, 30 meters away yeah. Um, and they can actually hear you and can sort of communicate messages through the lines a lot easier and that's on field. But um, yeah, I think it's important, but at the same time, we play a role, you know, as leaders to help steer the group. And, and I think, you know, all our communication will be that it's, you know, disappointing that we can't have them there, but we obviously have to feed off our own energy a little bit more. So I think you just try and turn the volume up on that of getting the buzz up and about as we sort of do in the, in the locker room and take that out onto the field so that there's no gaps, but um, it's certainly not going to be the same or easy, but uh, yeah, we'll just have to make do unfortunately without it. Hey, Bales, can I ask you, so I know, you you know, you've only been at the club, you know, a few years now, um, you know, made a big impact already or a couple of years. Um, but was it was it nice to sort of be back in the footy club? And I know all the social distancing things, but with all the, you know, the, a lot of the staff coming back and, you know, just being around the, the clan again, was it was it a nice feeling? Yeah, it was. Um, sort, of, sort of to just, yeah, change up the routine, get out of your suburb for once. Like, I was just, oh, I had a routine at home, but I wouldn't leave. Like, oh, like I just wouldn't travel far from home. Um, just to change it up, um, mix it up, and obviously see faces that you don't see as much. Um, I was training with Lace all that sort of off time. Um, and, yeah, to get into the club and see boys you haven't seen, it was just like sort of like a family reunion. It was just, yeah, it was so good. Um, yeah. and yeah, it just helps sort of fill in, fill in the day as well. And what about the hair, mate? It's a, it's <laughs> your cross to bear in life. I think that, um, whenever, you know, anyone, uh, interviews you or asks you questions, I need a, a bit of an update on the hair. Can you just give it a little shake? Can you give me a little, it's twist? a little, it's a little bit gone. I got, I got an earring as well, actually recently. Hello. Um, nice. I've got, yeah, I've got. A few different things that I'm putting there, but MJ that, I <laughs> it inspired me. Yeah, he did. Oh, um, on the hair, I'm curious, and then Bob, we were chatting about before, uh, uh, keen to know where the origins of the mullet came from. Was there a, was there someone you, you you took it from, or was it just something you, you slowly transitioned into? Yeah, growing up, like at school, they'd always tell you like you have to have your hair sort of this long, can't touch your collar, can't do this, can't shave your sides. Mm. I think it was from them telling me I couldn't do that that I really like, uh -oh. like aspired to get a mullet. Like, yeah, no, do nah, I don't know. It's just they tell you not to do something and you just want to do it even more. Doesn't like so, authority. Oh. <laughs> um, it's always yeah, the apple in Eden. Oh, <laughs> you know, not allowed. To, you're not allowed to eat this apple. Well, I didn't really yeah. feel like an apple until now. Now all yeah. I can think about is eating an apple. Do you have to sort of? Uh, do you sort of maintain this? Like, what's the maintenance of it? Is there little trims? Is there... What's your washing routine? Uh, washing, yeah. I don't wash it unless I want it, like, sort of fluffy. If cameras are out the next day, I'll, I'll give it a condition. <laughs> um, of course, you always but, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I sort of... I don't, I've never... I haven't trimmed this in a long, long time, the bottom. Mm. Um, but, like, I've trimmed the top just for, like, footy and stuff um, since I was away um, to come back to the club. Um, myself so it's a bit yeah DIY yeah. so I don't know does it does it carry some weight and I don't mean physical weight I mean metaphoric weight the people's mullet is what people are essentially terming it do you feel that the weight of expectation <laughs> to continue the mullet on and then never cut it like well, what are you going to do when um, you get to the point where you're like oh shit I don't, I don't know about the mullet anymore it's like the people don't want oh, that I know. Um, well, the plan at the moment is, yeah, keep the mullet. But I've been thinking, like, I wanted to grow my hair out like yours. I wanted the long sort of 
um, man bun type. Yeah. Uh, oh, what do I, Jesus. I don't know. I was, I was going to go with that. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think just for a few more years until I need to yeah, grow up, get years. serious. I'll, uh, wow. Yeah, a few more years, that's, mate. <laughs> that's a long plan. That's a lot. That's a long plan. I like that. Yeah. Have you, thought, of, have you um, thought about Have you thought about cutting it short and putting a grey rinse through it? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, mate. No, nah, sorry. No, nah, uh, not yet. Not nah. yet. Hey, yeah. hey. He didn't say ever. He just said not. Not at the minute. All right. Not All yet. Right. Nah. Now I'm just going on to moving on to other things. I mean, I've always been um, intrigued, and I think um, with your with your dress sense, I think you like you look like you're a vintage dress sense kind of character. Where where is that? Um, interest born from or, or grown from? Has it always been something of yours that you've liked? It looks like it's 90s esque, um, I reckon. But yeah, yeah. It's 90s. Um, I don't know. It sort of just came along as I was growing up. Uh, I don't know. It's sort of just looking at, well, for example, watching the MJ documentary, that was just mm. one of the big things I loved was just like mm. the clothes he'd wear were just wild. Um, yeah. And just the time back then. I don't know. I just sort of have an interest in even just like, just like denim, like whatever type of denim I can get my hands on, like shorts. I wear denim shorts all the time now, changing to those and just, yeah. um, I know it's just a bit um, weird. I just love baggy sort of 90s look, um, just yeah. cozy, comfy, you know? Yeah. Is the, um, are, you a, are you a sort of shoe man? Are you a, are you a collector of runners well, or I shoes was, or anything like that? I was, but... Um, there were just so many pairs I wouldn't, I wasn't wearing, so I, I sort of stopped buying them. I reckon six months ago, and I've got that many pairs of shoes I just haven't touched, and it's just I had to stop. Yeah, it was a bad habit. I just buy for the sake of buying. It was just yeah, silly. Um, but no, I do love my shoes. Have you got a favourite pair? I got a favourite pair. Um, my Air Max 98. I wear those to every every game. Um, I mm. played. Bond knows that. I've sort of changed over to. Um, the TN to every game now, but um, mm. thought I had to wear those shoes last year to every game. Yeah, because are you are you superstitious? I've always thought uh, there's a you know I've noticed a thing or two the shoes and different <laughs> bits and pieces. I'm like, is he uh, you know very superstitious kid? Yeah, I'm uh, superstitious when I want to be, um, not when it oh. sort of hinders performance, but when I feel like yeah, I don't know I sort of learned, that's learned that's to tame one. it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can choose when no, you want to be superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> no, just when I know it will help. Um, yeah, a little bit, I suppose. Like mm. I wear the same socks. I wear two pairs of socks. Wear the same socks underneath. Um, just things that sort of make me, you know, comfortable to to play. I suppose. But that's not, not, not super, superstition, sort of, though, is it? Like that's like it, wearing two pairs of socks because it feels good. Is like that's yeah. Well, I've got some crazy. I've got some crazy ones. I got yeah. some crazy I mean, he's ones. He's giving us like, the PG can, version. I'm, yeah. yeah I, you remember Malulaba in 20, I don't know when it was. I said it at a team meeting. I was like, mm. Bevo was asking if anyone had superstitions. This is more like OCD, like weird stuff. But it's like yeah. growing up and still to this day, um, yes. when I go into the tent, yes. yeah. <laughs> right. Keep going. Oh, so. Still to this day, don't judge based on this. Um, Still to this day, whenever I go into the fridge, right? So the fridge is like in the pantry. So when I get something out of the fridge, by the time the fridge door closes, I need to exit the pantry. And how many steps I take outside of the pantry times by 50 is how many <laughs> AFL games I'll play. And if I don't take steps outside before the <laughs> fridge door closes, I won't play AFL. Like I've had this since I was like 13. Um, I wasn't going to play AFL. And now it's like, how many steps am I taking? I'm taking about eight. Try to get four hundred, but yeah, we'll find out. There you go. Okay. I think four hundred. I think that might qualify yeah. as super yeah. superstition, and possibly, <laughs> possibly even as a sort of step further. Yeah. No, that's. All. I was giving you the PD version, but yeah. One of our, one of the most superstitious people, or you know, routine-based people I've ever come across was Matty Boyd. Now, Matty Keith Boyd, I should say. Bob, you played a fair. Yeah, that's right a fair chunk yep. of games with him. Did it evolve yep. over time or was it just always part of who he was in his football? Uh, no, he was always there. He was always um, pretty full on, pretty intense. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind That's of softened enough. a little bit in the, 
towards the late years, but he, he had his yeah he had his certain things that he needed to sort of stick yeah. to. The the one that the one the most memorable one of his that I found endlessly amusing was, mm. and I think I might have told you this before, but before every game, he would uh, in the half an you know that half an hour before the team meeting, mm. Boyd he'd be kick he'd be kicking a footy at the light switch from about fifteen <laughs> meters away. And he couldn't stop until he'd flicked the switch over. Mm. And so sometimes it'd take him twenty eight minutes, sometimes it'd take him mm. a minute. But he he couldn't he couldn't kind of yeah. move on until he'd Yeah. Um and we used to get we used to get very excited when it started to get close to the team meeting and there was the possibility that, you know Oh, oh he's not gonna get it. He wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't well, flick it over. The thing that would happen if you got if you somehow got wound up in his routine you were part of his routine you didn't have a routine anymore it was like his routine became your routine routine because every now and again i kick with him before uh you know just in between same same sort of thing maybe before the meeting and he'd always have two cups yeah. two cups of uh maybe an energy oh, drink that's or, right. and some gatorade yeah. and he put them in a certain spot on the table and boys blokes got to the point where they'd start moving them um and he and he would lose <laughs> so he'd, it was frustrating but You'd be kicking with him, and you'd just be, you know, work, and then all of a sudden he'd disappear and go. He'd have a, you know, quick sip or something, and you'd just be waiting, looking at the clock, and just wondering when is Boyd going to come back? And then he'd come back, and and he used to hit you really hard, like he was so intense and ready to go that you just go up for a high five. But his high fives would be like, you know, a a, a, a punch almost, and you just have to brace for it. <laughs> so interesting. I miss that guy. Oh, I miss mm. that guy Me too. Hey, um, that's probably about it today, lads. We're um, mm. we've uh, that's all the time we got. Hey, Bailey, good luck for the year, mate. Um, loved watching you last year. Uh, I know all the Bulldog supporters. You've become an instant favourite with us. Keep the hair going. Keep the earrings going. More of that. More of that. More of the superstitions. More of the more steps after the fridge closes. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Get get that tally up to five hundred games. We'll be happy with that, okay. uh, Marcus. Yeah. Uh, you look after yourself, pal. Um, we'll uh, catch you <laughs> next he week. Does this. He always does <laughs> this. <laughs> well, it's just a little power play towards you. No, yeah, it's yeah. great to see you both. Um, <laughs> well, I keep training it, hard man. and stay, and more importantly, stay healthy so we can see you all out on the park. Will do. Thank you. Thanks, Good Baz. stuff, lads. Right. Hooroo.